Hey, this is Saul over with Saul Overman Survival. Um, I'm going to do a quick video on an item I picked up today that I think is really fascinating. Um, what this, what we have here, is a handmade black powder rifle, black powder firearm. It's not a rifle; it's smoothbore. Um, you can see, you get an overall. Sure, it's very thin and long. It's kind of hard to photograph indoors here. Let me back up a little bit. Let me get a picture from this side. It's 54 and a half inches overall length. You can see it's very long and slender. The story on this gun as I got it is that it was brought back from the Vietnam War by a American advisor that was there early in the Vietnam War, early in the 60s, that came up on a gunsmith in a very small remote Cambodian village near the Thai border in the mountains that was making these this type of firearm and he ordered two of them from the gentleman that was making them and brought one of them back and gave one of them to his commanding officer and this is the one he brought back it's a very fascinating firearm the stock I'll give it, kind of go over it from the butt end first the uh, butt plate appears to be Buffalo horn. It's a little crudely finished. It's attached uh, with three, looks like three iron nails. The stock appears to be teak. Has uh, the butt plate is kind of poorly fitted and smooth. However, the rest of the stock work is really shows somebody had a talented hand with it. Um, it's very gracefully shaped with gracefully well cut lines. Very good hand checkering. You can see it extends into the forearm here. We'll show bottom side of the stock and the, the left side of it there. Again, well cut checkering. It's a very pretty stock, very nice piece of wood. Um, the only markings on the gun are on the on the stock. There they are there. They appear to me to be Keimer lettering. I'm not an expert by any means in uh, Oriental languages. If anybody knows the translation of these characters, I'd certainly love to hear from you. The furniture on the gun is brass. All seems to be the same thickness brass, which is suspiciously trigger guard as well. And that tang plate, you can see that reverse lock plate. All seems to be the same thickness, and it looks very much to me like it is um, artillery shell casing that have been uh, used as uh, beaten out and used as flat brass stock. The other furniture is iron, and it appears to have homemade screws. That you can notice the screw heads are still in good shape. I don't believe the gun's ever been disassembled. I don't believe it's ever been fired. It has a um, Very long, slender steel rod for a ramrod. The barrel, show the nipple and the barrel extension here. The barrel, I don't know what the origin of it is. Um, it appears to be non-tapering straight piece of pipe. It's not rifled. Um, the bore, has a clean cut, no attempt at making a crown. Uh, like I said, it's smooth bore. Uh, that measures, I measured it, it measures almost exactly 30 caliber. So I would suspect it was made for 28 caliber round balls. Little knob attached to the, uh, to the ramrod. The only sight on it is this front sight. Very small, looks like it's pinned in or a, um, staked in into a hole very small piece of uh metal for a front sight no real finish on it i believe it was left in the white show the hammer again the hammer um you know is very unusual looking i've seen hammers similar to that in other oriental firearms um and persian type um black powder weapons that have that reverse hook on it 
Um, the only, like I said, it doesn't appear to have ever been fired. It's not holding a cock at this time. The, the, the hammer spring is very strong, and I think it's overpowering the, um, the sear. Trigger has a return spring, or it may be bumping the same main spring. But I'm sure whatever um, is keeping it from holding cock would be fairly easy to fix if one wanted to. So I just found this to be an extremely fascinating firearm. I've never seen anything like it. Um, my suspicion is that this is not meant as a decorator piece. I believe that it was meant um, for these... Uh, hill people to use. I believe it was used for taking small game out of the tops of trees. Monkeys, birds, uh, other mammals from the tops of trees. And the barrel length probably was, uh, and these are small people. The stock, smock, stock is very small. Show my hand on the butt to give you an idea of the scale. I think the long barrel was to get the muzzle past the first layer of foliage, foliage in the jungle so the shot could be placed up into the canopy where monkeys or birds might be. One of the reasons I wanted to show this was just to give an idea of what can be created um, under primitive conditions with hand tools. It's really, uh, really an elegant looking firearm that I believe would be effective, you know, to be used for uh, its intended purpose of taking small game. Could also be loaded since it's smooth work. Could be loaded with a uh, small charge of uh, fine shot or multiple projectiles. It's in very good condition for its age. Um, from the person I got it from, they. Uh, guessed it was made probably in uh, right around 1962 so that puts it right at 50 years old very little no real rust on it just a little it was left in the white the barrel was and you can even see some of the original white that hasn't turned patina yet a little bit of patina on the brass parts but other than that um, no real condition issues with it it's a very small trigger guard obviously made for people with small hands very small, tiny wrist area of the gun. Very elegant and, and fast pointing little, little rifle. I just think it's very unusual to find something, a rifle that's that small with that barrel length. It's reminiscent of, uh, in some ways, of the garden guns that one sees uh, that came out of Europe, and especially Belgium, um, during the 1800s. They were used for garden pest control, rabbit hunting, etc. Although none of those that I've ever seen had a barrel length, you know, anything approaching this. This barrel is, um, you know, running over 45 inches, 48 inches in length. Overall length of it, I get, like I said, was 54 and a half inches, and the stock's not very long. Beautiful teak wood. You know, obviously made um, out of locally obtainable materials that the craftsman could get a hold of. You know, wood that was found in the forest where he lived. Um, like I said, I believe the brass is scrounged from uh, artillery, artillery shells. Uh, buffalo horn butt plate would have been available. Uh, buffalo horn would have been available to those peoples. The spacer appears to be a piece of sheet aluminum. It's probably also uh, scavenged military surplus. Show the screw heads again. Like I said, I believe the, the screws are handmade. If I can get a zoom on it, keeps keeping focus on if I have enough light. Very long nipple. It's very unusual. One piece nipple. It's not a screw in nipple. Hand forged into the uh, that barrel extension there. The nipple block looks to have been uh, soldered on. Silver soldered on. All you can see. If, I don't know if the camera will show it or not, but you can see the cross hatching from a hand cut for a hand saw cut the uh, cut the stock. It wasn't smoothed out it was from this angle. Very interesting firearm. I've never seen one like it. Um, 
I got it uh, for a pretty fair price. I, I don't think I got an extreme value on it. Um, but it was just so fascinating I had to get it. A true handmade uh, firearm from the Orient in this condition. I just couldn't pass it up. But like, like I said, it does show what can be created with somebody with skills in their hands. Firearms, people think, I think a lot of people that are maybe pro-gun control think that there's something magical about a firearm. Something that uh, the gods created or, or, or only uh, in, industry can create. And a, man, a man at a bench with hand tools and locally available materials you know, obviously, can produce a working firearm. And this man, you know, was known to make these. Apparently, turned them out in some number. It was his, you know, his profession to make these. So it wasn't something that took him, you know, an undue amount of time to make. Probably sold them very cheaply. I don't know what his source for the barrel was. It doesn't look like a barrel that was forged over a mandrel as as you see in uh, 16th, 16th and 17th century firearms. It looks like some sort of a pipe or tubing, but I don't know you know what other use that that size tubing would have. You know, it's fairly thick walled and you know, it's not thin walled tubing like we'd find for plumbing or um, anything such as that. So I don't know what the you know, if that was some sort of a uh, off the shelf tubing or piping I don't know what it's other what other uses it would have been it's very straight it's not bent at all if anybody has any um, any information if anybody's ever seen anything like this previously and has any more information on uh, weapons of this type or can direct me to any, any site or anything that has any more information on them or any other photographs, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Again, I want to show the markings on the buttstock that I, I believe are these are uh, Keimer characters. Of course, I don't know what they mean. They appear to be hand carved into the stock. Maybe the maker's name. There's no serial number or anything like that on it. Uh, obviously, there's no markings on the barrel, no no metal markings at all. So, anybody has any other any more information they can help me out on this? I'd sure love to hear from them. Do another look overall. Give you a look at it from the muzzle end, looking down on the weapon. It's kind of hard to photograph in here. It's so large, so long. And get a little further back from it. There we go. Let me get you a high view of it here. Okay, thanks for checking this out. Uh, like I said, I'd love to hear from anybody that can give me any more information on it. And thanks for watching this song. Y'all have a great day.